Hi, uh, I'll give this a second to focus, but um, today we are going to look at limits. Um, not those graphically, but those that we can evaluate using algebra. And we're going to consider uh, limits, both those that are, uh, can be evaluated directly and those that we have to do a little work first. Um, I'm going to do three examples today. The first one, limit as x approaches 3 of 2x plus 5 over the square root of 5x plus 1. Notice in this particular case, if we let x approach 3, nothing bad happens. My denominator uh, approaches the square root of 16, which is 4. Um, it is not 0. It's not um, non-real. And so we can just evaluate this limit directly. As x approaches 3, as x gets close to 3, my numerator is going to approach 11. My denominator is going to approach 4, and this is the result. Nothing bad happens. We evaluate it as it is. My second example is one that you will find worked out in the uh, problems, the examples that I did. Also, you also have available the, all the homework type examples that are all worked out for you. This is problem 2C, and it is the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x cubed minus 15x minus 9 over x squared plus x minus 12. In this situation, notice my denominator is approaching 0. That is bad. It means that we can't evaluate this limit directly. Um, we will de later deal with situations where the numerator does not approach 0, but in this particular situation, my numerator is also approaching 0. This is called an indeterminate form. Or an indeterminate limit. It means that the value of the limit cannot be determined in its present form. It does not mean that the limit doesn't exist. We do not, not know what happens with this particular limit. Anything can happen. It could approach any real number, and it may not exist. We don't, we don't know. Indeterminate form means that you have to do more work to be able to determine what the actual uh, limit is going to be. In this particular situation, the work that we have to do is just basic factoring. I have two polynomials. As x approaches 3, both of these polynomials are approaching 0. That means that x minus 3 has to be a factor of each of the polynomials. So we will go ahead and factor them. My denominator factors as x minus 3 times x plus 4. That's simple to factor. My numerator is a little bit more complicated because of the cubic. But since I know that 3 is a factor, I mean x minus 3 is a factor, 3 is a 0, I can use synthetic division. I will remind you of what, how to do that. We will put the 0 on the outside and the coefficients on the inside. 2, 0. Make sure you put in that 0. Negative 15, negative 9. The first term, that leading coefficient comes down. After that, we multiply and then add. 6 times 3 is 18. It gives me 3. 3 times 3 is 9. The end result being 0. That better be 0. That's the remainder. That means that x minus 3 is a factor. And so now I can factor this as x minus 3 times 2x squared plus 6x plus 3. The x minus 3's can then reduce. I am left with 2x squared plus 6x plus 3 over x plus 4. Write that step. We need to reduce it before we take the limit. 
these two expressions are equivalent as long as x does not equal 3. The limit means that we are not letting x uh, be 3, we are approaching 3. But the value is going to be the same as if x were 3, and so then we can evaluate this. The limit is going to be 18 plus 18 plus 3 is 39 over 7, and that is the value of the limit in this particular case. My third example, and yes, I normally erase with my hand. It's just much simpler and easier and faster. My third example is the limit as x approaches 3, seems to be 3's day, of 5x minus 15 over the square root of 7x plus 4 minus 5. And again, this is indeterminate, 0 over 0 form. There are actually seven indeterminate forms. We'll get the other ones as, you know, later on as we go through the course. In this particular case, the algebra that I need to do in order to evaluate this limit is to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Remember doing that in algebra class? Well, now we have an actual reason for doing it, not just that it makes things look nicer. We actually need to do this in order to figure out the value of the limit. So, my, I'll start with the denominator. My denominator has the form a minus b times a plus b, which we all know yields a squared minus b squared. That is why we choose to multiply in that form. So in this case, I get 5x minus 15 times square root of 7x plus 4 plus 5. Don't distribute that through. We're going to end up reducing things, so just leave it like that. We do need these parentheses in both places. Otherwise, it's not the same. My denominator becomes 7x plus 4 minus 25. a squared minus b squared. Your a being the square root of 7x plus 4, the b being 5. So we can simplify this a little bit. Limit x approaches 3. I can factor out the 5, and I'm left with x minus 3 times square root of 7x oops, plus 4 plus 5 over, this is 7x minus 21. I will <coughs> factor out the 7 in the denominator. 5x minus 3, square root of 7x plus 4, plus 5, all over 7 times x minus 3. Again, at this point, we can reduce 5 times the quantity 7x plus 4, plus 5, over 7. And now we can evaluate this limit directly. At this point, I stop writing. Limit as x approaches 3, because I'm about to evaluate it. Notice uh, in every step until this point, I have to write that. And this becomes 5 times. This is the square root of 25, which is 5, plus 5, which is 10, all divided by 7. And then the final result then is 50 over 7. That is the value of the limit.